In today's Retro Tech Repair, we're going to be repairing this CGL Galaxy Invader 1000 that I bought spares or repair on eBay. Hello and welcome to Retro Tech Repair. As you might know, I buy vintage retro tech spares or repair on eBay. Sometimes I get lucky and things are easy to repair, and this is one of those examples. But I get quite a few comments from people who are just starting out in the hobby, so I thought it would be interesting to share something like this, because it's a simple repair that most people could do at home. I hope that you enjoy today's video as we dive into our Galaxy Invader 1000. To me that looks like it's had a cigarette burn on the screen. Uh, it's a shame. I'll be able to polish some of that out perhaps, but not a lot. Uh, there's actually quite a few kind of burn and scuff marks on there. So not great physical condition. Um, battery compartment looks relatively clean. A little bit of corrosion on there, but I don't think it's going to affect performance. And uh, apart from that, you know, it's not bad. It's not bad. Let's take a look at the eBay listing. Vintage 1980s Galaxy Invader 1000 handheld. Nine pounds and one pence is what I paid and 290 shipping. The seller described it as vintage 1980 CGL Invader 1000 handheld. Condition is not working, has scratches. See pictures for full details. Dispatch Royal Mail, second class. So, uh, you know, uh, let's put some batteries in and see if the seller was right in their description. So far, it's been pretty accurate. No, dead, completely dead, nothing at all, no sound, no graphics. So that's just how the seller described, let's get it repaired and see how it plays. There's some corrosion on these screws here, but it doesn't look like it's restricted only to the battery compartment, there's corrosion on some of the other screws as well. And they are a bit gnarled. So it's like somebody's been in here and I'm not 100% convinced these are the original screws either. My guess is that these four screws are going to get us access inside of here. Yep. All right, very dirty inside, but uh, there is uh, a lot of corrosion on this switch here. Uh, the getter compound is intact in the display, so that's good. So at this stage I should explain what a getter is. The VFD or vacuum fluorescent display in these types of games relies on a vacuum in order to work. The vacuum is contained within a glass envelope and the getter compound is flashed onto the interior of that glass envelope during manufacture in order to absorb impurities that are outgassed from the electrodes during its operation. If the vacuum of the display has been compromised then that getter compound will turn a milky grey or white in colour and that's an indication that in fact the display has lost its vacuum and at that point unless you can get a new display from a different game there's really little point persisting with your repair. In this case there was no damage to the VFD and in fact I haven't seen damage to the VFD in any of the games that I've yet tried to repair so we can press on and look for the real cause of the problem. Let's get this away from the plastics altogether. There's a sounder in the back there, it looks like it's bonded into the plastic case. Uh, so I'll probably unsolder the wires, but I'm not going to unsolder it from the sounder. I don't seem to have a lot of luck soldering back onto those. I'll unsolder it from the printed circuit assembly, and then I'm going to go ahead and unsolder these two tabs. We'll get the plastics all out of the way, and we can concentrate on cleaning those up later. So now we have our electronics away from the plastics. Looking over it, I don't see any evidence of rework. Uh, the don't see any kind of immediately obviously burnt or exploded parts or anything like this. Obviously these switches are extremely dirty and we have this little piece of wire up here which uh, seems to be wrapped around one of the connectors and I don't really know why. Uh, it looks like the IC, whatever it is, is mounted underneath this display here. There's some transistors, a couple of transistors 
a uh, quite a few diodes, quite a few resistors, and the IC underneath there, and a couple of uh, ceramic capacitors and a couple of electrolytic capacitors as well. So we just get rid of this little bit of wire first. I think somebody's kind of wrapped this around for some reason. There it is. I'm not sure why that would have been there. Anyway, it's gone. It's out of here. Certainly if it was causing a short, it won't be anymore. I can imagine how it could have been though. It'd be interesting. Maybe we just try that straight away. Get it to the bench power supply and see if that was it. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's see if that little bit of wire shorted over there was the whole problem or whether there's some more things going on here. Okay, so I got rid of that little piece of wire that was just bridging these two contacts. I hooked it up to my bench power supply. We're just going to switch it on. And there we go. I don't know if you can see that. Let me just dim the lights. Uh, it works fine. Just a little short across there seemed to be all of what the problem was. Quite amazing. All right, so it is nonetheless very dirty. So we'll go ahead and get this cleaned up and then uh, we'll see if we can do something with the plastics, get it all reassembled and uh, we should be good to go. All right, so looking again at this, I looked at this in a little bit more detail. And when I look at it again, I look at that piece of wire was between these two contacts. Now I think these two contacts are normally closed. I think they're normally closed unless there's a, uh, a power cable in there, in which case uh, it separates it. So I think that in fact that wasn't the problem. So then I start looking elsewhere and I notice in here that some of these battery terminals looked a bit fragile. And as I lifted one out, this is what I found. If you can see that, that battery terminal is just completely corroded in very nearly split in two. I'll be surprised if there's any connectivity across that. If there is, it's going to be very minimal. So we need to find a new battery spring that we can put in here as well. So battery contacts are pretty cheap and I'd bought a bunch on eBay to repair a different game not too long ago. So we'll take a look at what we have and we'll see if we can find something that will fit. These are the ones that came out of the game. I just pulled these out of the game. Uh, here is our severely broken one. And then uh, at my disposal, and I have... Uh, couple of different types of connector. I think what I'm going to do though is I'm going to try and use these spring ones just because I have more of them. These need to slide into an existing cutout like so. Yeah, but uh, these are too wide. In fact, everything's too wide, but I think some of the these spring ones might be a little easier to cut down. So we're going to do that. So here's our cut down connector. I just took some cutters to it and snipped down the end there. It's not a very neat job, but it's going to be sliding into a plastic insert. I don't think it's going to be a big problem. So we'll just give this a quick clean before we reassemble it. I'm going to use just some window cleaner and a toothbrush just to get in here and clean that up. And I'm just going to have to use a pair of pliers or something just to slide that in because it's a bit tight in the plastic still. Probably as far as it's going to go. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. It's not perfect, but it doesn't look too bad. So I think for consistency, I'd like to keep this, if this is a spring contact negative, I'd like to keep this as a spring contact too. So I'm going to do the same again at this side. Then I'm going to use this original contact and one of these original contacts as the positive, and then it'll leave me a spare original contact that I'm sure I can use in some other game. So I have these little metal brushes. I'm going to use these to Clean up some of these contacts a bit. They're in pretty good shape, actually. I don't want to stress them too much because I don't want them to lose their spring or crack like the other one did. This one we're going to have to cut. So we'll do that. Nice. So we'll slide that one through there. Hopefully, and that can be our positive contact at one end. And then we'll take our other positive contact and that can be the positive contact at the other end. And before we solder those up, let's just pop some double A's in there and see if they still function. Looks pretty good to me. So one thing I do need to do since I repurposed these connectors or changed the connectors actually is I need to just solder a bridge wire across here so that we have continuity uh, to form the circuit. Uh, 
there. That's better. Solder our speaker wires back on. So as I solder the wires back onto the battery terminals, it's worth remembering that in fact there was no need for me to remove the printed circuit assembly from the plastics enclosure and no need for me to remove the piezo sounder from the board. But that's all with the benefit of hindsight and from my perspective it still makes sense to remove the electronics from the plastic assembly. It just makes accessing the electronics for diagnostics so much easier and it reduces the likelihood of you melting something in the plastics enclosure while you're soldering on the board. Well, the game works perfectly, but unfortunately I was overzealous when I was polishing the display and I managed to polish off some of the graphics. I'm really, really disappointed with that. It's not the first time that it's happened and I really need to be more careful when I'm repairing these games. But I suppose, although it's worse than it was, it wasn't great to start with. The crack was already there and there were already marks on the display, so it's not the end of the world. So that about wraps it up for our Galaxy Invader 1000 and I almost feel bad putting such a simple video out. But what you see is a reality of buying and selling used games on eBay. Not everything you get is going to be an exciting or complicated repair and sometimes that's a good thing because it shows with a little bit of patience and a little bit of good luck almost anybody can buy something spares or repair on eBay, repair it themselves and turn it into something that they can enjoy or that they can pass along to somebody else who can enjoy it instead. So if repairing stuff from eBay is something you haven't tried but you'd like to, maybe you'll give it a go. But in the meantime, I'd like to thank you so much for watching Retro Tech Repair. And off we come with a lid.